Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Unit Lost. I am Josh, and I'm here to bring you something a little bit special, ladies and gentlemen. We've got an EU versus NA show match. You, the, the titans of Europe, the brave heroes of Europe, fighting the, the shadowy, dark and horrible people from North America. There's no bias here. It is Unit Lost Great British Gaming after all. No bias at all. Don't worry about it. It will not creep in a second into our look at this match because it was really cool to see this, right? I love stuff like this. I don't know about you guys, but I really do eat this stuff up because the EU, the Europe versus North America rivalry has existed in like every esport you can imagine. When you have Europe going up against North America on even footing at LAN events, it's always huge because let's be honest, let's be brutally honest here. European players tend to just win. Like, we tend to have a really good player pool over here in Europe, and North America tends to struggle slightly in a lot of games. There are a couple of scenes where North America does pretty well. Dota, for example, I do believe North America have a pretty goddamn good record. I think in fighting games as well, North America tends to do better than Europe. I'm not an expert on the fighting game scene, however, so I can't be too sure on that one. But in some of the bigger esports, Overwatch, you know, League of Legends especially, like, Europe has tended to be kings and this is sort of the first scene uh, the first moment we've had in ages where we get to see europe going directly against na and it was really really interesting and that's why i've taken us here to ilios to look at this match you can see that the fighting's already breaking out and we have this really cool team comp being played by both sides now ladies and gents this is being played without Brigitte. This is like a patch ago, well, two patches ago, I think, by now, uh, where, you know, there's no Brigitte, there's no new Hanzo, there's none of that. And so we're seeing these sort of older team comps coming through. The Tracer, uh, the Tracer, oh, the Tracer, I almost said Symmetra then, God no. The Tracer Sombra, why am I blanking on Sombra's name? I don't know. But yeah, the, the Tracer Sombra combo, right? And in my mind, like, this is a really cool team combo. It's one of the hardest to execute correctly, and you can see exactly kind of why. Kib is showing us why here. You have to be so patient on that Sombra. You have to wait for the dive to sort of get ready and get ready to go. And then you have to get that sort of perfect synergy between the Tracer and the Sombra to get those kills. If the Sombra lands a hack on something, it doesn't usually matter too much what gets hacked, by the way. Like if it's a D.Va or if it's a Winston or something like that, it very easily sets up a kill for the DPS and for the tanks to come in and get those kills. But Fusion University play this team comp so well. This is considered like a North American style, right? The, like Fusion University played this superbly, largely on the back of Who Are You, who is Korean. Just, just FYI, so, you know, good on you, North America. You can import beautifully. But who are you? Like, man, this guy is insane. Like, this guy, to me, who are you kind of... I don't know, he's like the epitome of what you want out of contenders, right? He is a player that should be in Overwatch League. And being brutally honest with you, like, both of these teams could probably beat Shanghai Dragons. You know, just, just you know, just throwing that out there. Both of these teams are superb. But, like, who are you? What an amazing player. What an amazing player this guy is. And if you watch him throughout this series, it's insanely good. And you can see both teams sort of duking for position. You can see how, like, frantic and chaotic this team comp is. How aggro it is. How much skill it takes to work. And you can see the EMP coming out having huge impact in these fights. Like, I love playing Sombra. And, like, this is sort of one, a cool thing for me as well. Like, I talked about this in a previous video. Where you can use pro-level play to sort of watch and figure out how to play certain heroes. Because, like, if you watch how these Sombras play, they're finding hacks before trying to do anything. They're prioritizing the hacks super heavily. And I found that reflective in my own play when I go and play Sombra elsewhere. It's like, okay, well, if I try and play to aggro without hacking too much, it's really, really bad. But if I get the hacks on stuff, they die in mere moments. It's more about setting up kills rather than actually engaging them. North America with a cheeky aggro play and it's really going to start paying off on them as well. Like North America's play style, the, the aggro dive is absolutely superb. Both of these teams are phenomenally good, by the way, and if you didn't get to uh, get a chance to go and watch the Contenders Finals, I hardly recommend you do so, of course, as a as a fan of esports. But I understand, I understand that, you know, there's a lot of Overwatch League and there's a lot of sort of Overwatch esports around, so it can be difficult to know what to watch. Watching the Contenders Finals, though, definitely something I would recommend. If you're familiar with the Overwatch scene as well, you'd recognize a lot of the players floating around in those matches. Gib trying to get set up here, he's looking for the Zenyatta, looking to put some pressure on him. Transcendence comes out, okay, they can wait it out, wait for the EMP. Fluffs is, is translocated there doesn't quite get it and then some beautiful positioning out of alarm here means that he doesn't get that emp and british hurricane now i'm gonna struggle you see like the winston gets killed and that's what i was mentioning earlier where you can get that hack on a tank doesn't matter too much and you can convert that quite nicely into a kill but you know this this is a bit of a, a pyrrhic victory i think that's how you say that 
it's like they're using all these ultimates just to try and flip the point, and it's already on like 44%, uh, 40% to 99%. That's a little bit rough. But I've been super impressed by the British Hurricane. Like, there's, there's, you know, three British players currently playing on that team at the moment, Kiv Fusions and Funny Astro, all putting in superb performances. All of that team is European, unlike, you know, the, the dirty, underhanded Americans that had to import some Koreans to, to you know, mar this NA versus EU spectacular. Because let's be honest, you know, Korea tends to do pretty well at esports and tends to sort of be kings or are they are they ladies and gents with how the overwatch league is going like the teams with heavy korean pl uh, players on them not doing quite so well although every overwatch league team at the moment i do believe does have at least one korean player so korea still showing pretty strong i do believe anyway enough enough sort of tangents you can see north america like they know what they need to do here they they know exactly what they need to do and they know they can engage with the sound barrier as well it's completely safe elk just throws out the sound barrier they can engage using it emp is not going to be up for a while because summer can't build it as fast as she used to so they just go in emp uh emp sound barrier engage super hard get a bunch of kills no goddamn a problem for these guys elk by the way another super player had amazingly good performances in this series definitely worth keeping an eye on him of course europe not without their own stars craigie here just showing it off and of course there we go funny astro just showing a lucio dunk like we, we need the you know the lucio basketball skin forget the hockey because he just slammed dunk three people well not three people two people and a mech into the well and it's it's phenomenally good, but as you can see, who are you? This guy is is just scary. Like if you put him in Overwatch League, I genuinely want to see how he stands up against the the Titan Tracers in Overwatch League. Of course, with Stage Four on the way, with Brigitte on the way, Tracer might not be quite as big of a thing. So you know, maybe maybe now isn't the time to hire who are you? But incredible player, incredible Tracer. But but ladies and gents, there's a reason why I picked this map and it's because we got to see a variety of playstyles so let's go and see the next one now then ladies and gents so i mentioned the sombra tracer being this high execution high skill playstyle well british hurricane our, our heroes in the blue are going to be doing something a little bit different and they've got to do it to you know smash the tides of horror that you know comes from across the atlantic ocean and that strange foreign land that is the united states of america that is going to be the european quad tank right this is the moira meatball this is something that i think we're all kind of familiar with by now hopefully you guys are all familiar with it there is like one or two small details that i love at the moment, you can see the British Hurricane are just waiting. They're not doing anything. The reason why they're waiting is they are giving Fusion no chance to do any building up, doing any charge. They are waiting until the timer ticks down and they have to force Fusion University onto the point. Because if you run straight to the point, what ends up happening is you're going to be standing on it for about 20 seconds when it doesn't actually matter. The point isn't active and so you don't actually get any advantage from doing that. By waiting, someone has to come and contest on that point and that sets up a kill for these close range tanks, for the, the Roadhog especially, and get you these early kills very quickly you can see that fusion university have to constantly sort of dip in and out the point and the point already flipped because the people trying to do that died it's it's inc it's like a nice little thing it's a small detail but it's a very very cool one and the nice thing about that detail is that if you are playing quad tank if you are playing quad tank in your own games and you know you're willing to do a bit of shot calling you can just tell your team no guys like we engage when the timer says like five seconds and then we just run to the point otherwise just stay out of line of sight just wait be patient Stay as a big group, don't do anything, because feeding them ultimate charge, because your tanks, you're going to feed them a ton of it, it's not going to go well for you guys. So you just wait, wait for your moment, and then go in straight on the point, when there's like that five second timer, and they have to engage against you. And now Fusion University are going to have a tough time, right? Quad tank is really good when it gets a set up, they're going to try and engage, using the, the bomb to do it. Beautiful, like, synergized engage as well. You notice that they go in, they use the diva bomb, and then they use the EMP just as the diva bomb is about to burst, so that if anyone's trying to just tank it uh, behind a barrier, it's not going to work right you shut down the barrier but you know british hurricane a bit too a bit too cunning for that you know our british heroes here they're just a bit too wily our european you know valorous heroes there they're not going to fall for any underhanded tricks from the americans so they just stay alive just graviton surge it put a sound barrier on put all the damage in that they need and then bish bash bosh bobs your uncle and you win a fight isn't that nice fusion university starting to struggle starting to struggle a little bit under the pressure and so you can see that you know they're, they're going to try about the same thing again but now they have even fewer ultimates fusions has his uh shadow kib has a whole hog as well so if they're trying to get the point it could cause a big deal but disaster strikes as crusade gets taken down the the uh, shadow i think might have just clipped one but it's our uh, shadow so who the hell knows it's a bit of a random ultimate and unfortunately well yeah you know you got you got to give the yanks a chance right you know this this is just being sporting you know brits are all about sporting team spirit this is the nice part about being european it's not about necessarily winning it's about having a good time 
and sort of, you know, embracing people through sports and camaraderie and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, you let them take the point and feel good about themselves, get some percentage points on the board. You know, you, they, they got that first map as well so with some good tracer play, and good support play. So, you know, pat, pat on the back, guys. Very nicely done. But here kind of comes the slambulance. As British Hurricane actually decide to swap things up and try and get the, the Americans a taste of their own medicine as well. You know, just try and show them how it's done. That's, that's the other big thing, you know, just being friendly. Just, you know, hey, yeah, this is how you play this team comp. So Crusade goes in, sets himself up for a coalescence, and then, you know, just jumps on who I use bomb. Just in the choke point. Just really nicely placed by Huey, by the way. Like, that is a really, really spot on pulse bomb. Luckily, Crusade didn't activate his coalescence there, which is a really nice thing. One of the cool things that I, you know, you can spot with Crusade, and this is something that you should use to optimize your Moira play, is that if you are setting up to use a coalescence, always throw an orb out. Doesn't matter if it's damage or healing, but make sure you throw that orb before you coalescence, because of course you can't orb while you're coalescencing, or coalescing, I suppose. You're forming together. I don't know. But you can't throw that orb while you're using that coalescence, while you're using that ability. So what you need to do is throw the orb first and then coalescence and then you get more healing or more damage depending on what you need. But as you see, engage going in again. Look for a target just trying to set up. Engage goes in. Sound barrier gets used defensively, but they just wait a while, let it burn off because sound barrier, you know, it burns off nice and quickly. Well, Brigitte can put a permanent 150 armor on people. That's fine. That's A-OK. -okay. There's no problem with that. Some beautiful work, actually, by Beast Halo here to try and boop a couple of people off, but he does get hacked, and a hacked Primal Rage in Winston feels kind of helpless. Like, I don't know if you guys have been in that situation, but I certainly have, and it's, it's kind of no fun. It's kind of no fun. You just feel like a great big punching bag, but beautiful fighting here by the British Hurricane. Again, just picking out targets, Kib especially finding these hacks on targets, and then just the DPS is right there to follow up. The support alts are right there to follow up as well as Alarm uses Transcendence very early on in the fight. Couldn't get advantage to it, and British Hurricane even up the series because, you know, while it's nice to be sporting as well, this is a serious tournament, so we've got to take it seriously. So it's, it's now 1-1 against the American Menace. And so now, ladies and gents, we're on Ruins. We're on the, the sniper map, right? This is where you play Widowmaker and you have a big sniper duel and you see like Pine popping off in Overwatch League and it's like, oh my god, the snipers are so big. Do, do British Hurricane care? No, because, you know, sniping is underhanded in French and while France is in Europe, nobody likes the French. So we're just going to play quad tank again and just, you know, try and go from there. And if you are French and you are offended by that, um, I'm sorry that you're French. Anyway, right, okay, enough. Uh, so yeah, you can see that British Hurricane doing exactly the same thing, right? That hiding strat, just waiting, biding their time, picking their moment so that they're not going to be on the control point before it activates. Five second ticks through, they move in nice and aggressively, get straight onto the point. And you're going to see actually Zachary just build up his ultimate super fast here, by the way, on that Widowmaker. When Widowmaker can just land shots into targets non-stop, her DPS is actually pretty good, and her ultimate charge rate will be phenomenally fast. But you can see that British Hurricane, they're just playing by the wall, they're just hugging that wall, they know how to play Trench Warfare, and they're just set up in position to try and, you know, not get their head popped off by the Widowmaker. Instead, they're just going to play it nice and safe, stay on the point, stay in that big clump position, get Crusader very, very fast ultimate because, hey, Crusade is playing. Moira, who builds these ults very quickly. And meanwhile, Fusion University, they're going to actually struggle because they are playing a mono support strategy at the moment. This can work. It's kind of an interesting decision. Um, basically, the idea is that, you know, Elk is just going to be doing the majority of the healing so that Alarm can get some more damage, provide EMPs, and the health packs on this map are actually pretty good for, you know, using in combat. There's that large health pack, the mega health pack near the statue that you can sort of fight by as well, get some healing out of that one. But, you know, a lot of the things on British Hurricane are going to just burst you down anyway. But the big issue that I have with this strat is that, you know, how are you going to pop these tanks without that Zenyatta? How are you going to kill these tanks if you're relying on the DPS of a Widowmaker and a Tracer with no Zenyatta. And that to me is like a really big issue here with Fusion University strat is that they're gonna really struggle and sometimes, you know, this will happen where who are you will just, you know, meet Kib and Kib will say hi and then just, you know, blow him up and there we go. There goes the, the Korean export as I'm so happy to remind that everyone uh, everyone in the United States that hey yeah the, the best player on this team in the EU versus NA show match is is a Korean. Okay. Alarm set up, good to go. He's set up for the EMP. EMP is huge on the point, but Soundbrayer is just there waiting for him. Funny Astro waiting, biding his time. He knows the threat. They know that the Sombra EMP is coming, and they play around it beautifully. Make sure that they can get that defensive ultimate. Now their job is just to stay alive on the point, get some juicy damage in as well, and, you know, use all this tanking power. All this tanking power on the point. 
Now then, ladies and gents, like, E versus NA is a historied and storied matchup, okay? It's something that goes on and on and on and on. But at the end of the day, to me, it's all about the banter. It's all about the, the jokes. It's all about sort of, oh yeah, look how good this is, look how good this is. What's always interesting to me is how the meta develops differently in different countries and then, or different regions and then exploring how that works. And one of the issues that I have with Overwatch League is that we don't have that segregation anymore of EU versus NA, where you get to see like all these different metas developing. So this show match, I thought, was a really nice example, just showing what happens when two metas collide from two separate regions and seeing how it all goes. And you can see it throughout the show match, different styles being played, different ways of playing it, and just going up against each other in what is, at the end of the day, a friendly show match, but it's just a lot of fun at the same time. Now, at the end of the day, spoilers ahead if you don't already know for some reason, Europe did end up winning the series, but hey, at the end of the day, it's all about the bands. And unfortunately, well, Europe has America beat there too, so GG, no re lads. All right, guys, thank you for watching to the end. I have been Josh, just one voice amongst many, and I'll see you next time. Toodles.